Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new video in TNO, the last series of Europe, which we're playing is everyone's favorite, Reich Skomasariot. Awesome, but we're led by a certain Franz Walter Stahlecker, who got to read about the crisis of succession. The humidity of the room hit Stahlecker like a hot wave. He wrenched off his foggy glasses with a soft curse and slumped down into his chair. Recent events had torn the rug from under his monotonous life and sent him sprawling into the unknown. Despite the blame of Litzman's crash being assigned to everyone, from student militias to partisan terrorists, it had been left to Stahlecker to clean up its political aftermath. As as if this hadn't complicated matters enough, the government of Austin had decided to appoint him as a new Rox Commissar. Schalke wasn't a fool, he knew that, unlike Litzman. His succession had not been universally accepted. The door burst open, Theodor Flint stormed into the room with a pale face, all by General Obos, uh, Franz Becker. Rox Commissar Schalke, have you come to fix the air conditioning? Schalke muttered, loosening his tie. The rest of declared martial law around Latvia, Beck said, stiffly, his bulging eyes betraying his otherwise certain expression. What, despite the heat, Stalaker's blood ran cold. He disputed your appointment, Frunt replied hastily. That madman is starting an effing civil war. Our army is already mobilizing. Crap, Stalaker wiped the sweat from his forehead and leant back into his chair, his mind racing frantically. There's more, Frunt continued. The Reich is refusing to send aid. I fear something drastic is about to happen over there. We've been abandoned. For now, we stand alone in Dunneberg Putsch. The outbreak of a Borlaudi civil war in Austin has struck fear into the hearts of the inhabitants. Many men have picked up their rifles with shaking hands, hoping against all hope for the swift resolution to this conflict. The same cannot be said for Friedrich Yakon, the leader of the SS in Austin. Yakon has riled up much fury in both Stalak and the Russia's camps by cutting off communications and covertly gathering his forces. After much inaction, he has finally broken his self-imposed vow of silence and declared war against both sides in the civil war. In this grand speech to his many SS followers, Yakon declared both Stalak and the Russia to be traitors to the national daddy's cause. Human scum is able to be hanged high for the treason, alongside the friends and families. After praising Heinrich Daddy and the same system imposed onto Burgundy, Jekyll stated his desire for complete control of Austin no matter the cost. The shoots SS's fight in the South has finally broken away, and the future of the Civil War is set to look bloodier than ever. We can play as them, but for now we'll stay as Stalaker and begin with a storing order. The degenerate tide has risen, and human scum and ranting madmen alike have fractured Austin to satiate their perverse lust for power, coalescing sycophants of all stripes around the petty causes. Once we strike back against this vulgar treason, everything that the late Loza and his rightful successor Stalaker have worked for will be destroyed. Once we rally all the loyalists in the administration and the military to our and only then shall trump before all us. Order must be restored. Followed up with the last soldiers, last bureaucrats. Um, let's do last soldiers. Two. Be betrayed by one's racial brethren is the greatest pain of all. Those who deserted us for Dreschler and Meyer burned us away with all their vile actions, but we cannot wallow in our anguish while they wreak havoc throughout Austin. So are still over Stalak of the brave men who proudly display that their uh, swastika and embrace. The true values of national daddies must be roused to action against a treacherous scum yapping at her heels. Unless they return to her ranks, those scravings who abandon the legitimate heir of will be annihilated and renewed part of their activity in Austin. The death of the Rock's Commissar seems to have been a catalyst for various parts and groups that have been dormant in Austin. All across Austin, reports are coming in of power lines cut, patrols disappearing, and even open attacks on their garrisons. It seems that the idea of the partisan activity in Austin was over, uh, was overly optimistic at best, and any hope for a ceasefire utterly destroyed. How to solve the problem of these attacks is now a problem that the new government must deal with. Darn, darn, darn them. And we're going to be really stuck in here because right now these guys are stuck down here, which sucks a whole bunch. If we possibly can, I'd, I, mean, I don't necessarily want to abandon this area, but, um,. And the AI set this up a little bit too. We have a lot of divisions, especially over here. Oh crap. So yeah, we'll see what we, what we can do. Um, the Belarusian Mutiny. Michael Tushka stood in front of a crowd numbering the thousands, composed largely of native Belarusians, but also included many German settlers. All years in attendance were fixated upon the upcoming announcement that Vatushka was soon to make. It had been a week since the, uh, since the Pope of Austin had received proper information from the government, which was rather jarring to mind that were so used to the frequent spoon-fed information given to them by the Reich. Vatushka might not be the big daddy of the Reich's commissar, but as far as the people were concerned, this was the next best thing. Vatushka, sitting in front of a microphone wired into several uh, radio stations across Austin, ready to broadcast across the crumbling Reich's commissariat. His voice boomed, amplified across the plaza, in which people gathered as his voice took to the radio waves. He immediately declared the Reagan administration would be detrimental to Austin, speaking of the horrors that the people were forced to endure during the widespread political infighting. Through his words, however, he was notably cautious to navigate around the direct criticism of the Institutes of the Reich. Regardless of all this caution, what Tushka proposed remained still nothing short of treason. He announced with great enthusiasm the establishment of the Central European Council, a governing body under which the native Belarusians would lead and the German settlers would cooperate and be voiced as equals. Despite all of his cautious wording and deliberately conservative speech, the crowd erupted into a joyous frenzy. Cheers and chant echoed across applause for hours. Could this be true? Would the Belarusian people finally be free? I like to do, use Polovas, but he's an old man. He's politically shunned, and, uh, well, it really sucks. He's a career officer, so. Von Edelsheim. 
He will have to suffice for now. The Siege of Riga. The Siege of Riga, once HQ of Heinrich Lose's Rax Commissar Dawson, has been transformed into Stalaker's personal fortress. The Madman Drusher, disputing his enemies' claim to the succession, rallied his forces and besieged Riga to storm his way into power. With a brave man resisting these brutes, Drusher now has initiated a full scale assault on the city. Civil war has come to Austin. The fighting's longevity has been matched only by its intensity. Gunshots and explosions can be heard throughout Riga as soldiers pour into the streets, grenades fly through the air, artillery fire pounds into the buildings, and tanks roll down the roads. Innocent civilians and soldiers alike have been brutalized by Drusher's men, whose desperation has stirred the forces of radicalism and have led them to fight for, for the cowardly militarist. With the barrages and explosive traps, let us stand a chance. Drusher and his sable rattles will be hanged on the spot, and soon Franz Velta Schalk will secure his rightful place as ruler of Austin. A glorious victory awaits us. Hmm. We can get two out of town, that'd be great. Oh crap, our cap was actually down here. Oh, that's not good. How are we supposed to defend up here then? And <laughs> that's the thing, you don't. Actually, you know what, if anything, we're training these guys. Oh, I guess. Oh crap. The Black Five Um. Do you want to do this? I think I've this before, so if you don't like this, please go ahead. We must regain our territory by any means necessary. I mean, I'd love to take Riga. Can you actually win there? No, you can't. Okay, I didn't think so. This is one of the rare times I'll actually use interceptors, so. Um, we could go attack, we could go defense, we'll see. UPO joins the war, we're going to that, please go right ahead. Oh, there. I'm not sure we can actually. Well, we'll see if we can win this one. If we can't win this one, then so be it, but we'll see. South African War, of course. Partisan attacks in Austin. Several reports of attacks against our armed factors were reported today. A group of partisans claiming responsibility to the Free Sons of Estonia, and they have announced that they will not uh, cease their attacks until Estonia is once again restored independence to the foul invaders and driven off. This is just the latest in the string of attacks that have plagued us ever since the death of Rakhine Commissar, and the government seems powerless to stop them. Darn them. The last bureaucrats. Is a pen mightier than the sword? Such a statement is flawed, but the necessity of bureaucrats cannot be understated. These pen, pen pushers are integral cogs of the machinery of the state and ensure the sustainability and prosperity of Austin as such. It was a heavy blow to Stalaker and the sniveling little worms who allow themselves to be seduced by the lies of Meyer and Drescher are slithered away from our administration. In terms of war, officials must be utilized to their maximum capacity, and the numerous goats of the most loyal bureaucrats must be harnessed for the civil war effective immediately. Dissent and divergence from Stalaker's war plan will not be tolerated. When a cog is put in its rightful place, all it can do is work. Then the rising? We remember that, please go ahead as well. Put down this level for once. But for us, we should be able to take these guys out pretty easily. I say that, but you know, you never know. We just go, go straight for Vilna? No? Oh. Um, we remember this, please go ahead. Oh, crap. Cool. You just take this Minsk. Well, yeah, that sucks. Well, yeah, if this doesn't go well for us, which honestly it looks like we're gonna just really just die here, a whole bunch. Um, if you're about that, please go ahead as well. Um, yeah, not doing great. Oh, a little bit of lag, probably because Muscovy is exploding. But yeah, if it doesn't go well, well. We'll see very, very soon. Well, everyone, this is, uh, this is awesome. We lost all of the north because there's literally no way we can do this. Um, uh, you basically have to use comms commands to do this okay. We did do a united front, though. The pans of the bureaucrats and the guns of the soldiers are crossing glorious unity. Now that the reigning men of Austin's administration and military pledge their utmost loyalty to Stalker, focusing their full attention towards the winning the Civil War, a united front will face no more internal division. The skills of these faithful men must be harnessed to drive the traitors and their evil ideas out of the Rikes Commissar, or else the House of Cards that Lodz and Stalker work too hard to build, and sell those will collapse into nothing. Gathering men. We need more men. Boosting your conscription will provide reinforcements for our many divisions, but soldiers alone will not win this war. It's the ideological purity and valiant camaraderie these new conscripts will bring to the battlefield that will determine who unites Austin. Let the bloodthirsty Slavs fight for revenge and hedonism. While the traitors of the Germans fight to betray our precious values, for them, defeat is inevitable. For us, once we've gathered men who fight not just for Stalaker, but for the Reich as well, victory is guaranteed. The odds may be stacked against us, but we shall prevail. Give them arms. Defend Riga. I don't understand this. I don't. I mean, I think Austin's going to get a rework in the future. I'm pretty sure it is. So I can't be too upset about this, even though I wasn't in one of the videos I did. But you know, well, I'll definitely have to use consequence because five divisions, especially as the Austin, even though we have a ton of equipment, it means literally nothing when you can't just produce divisions like immediately. 
because AI could produce divisions like an insane amount. Like it, the the AI cheats so hard in this game or this mod, or just in Hoi in general. But uh, give them arms. Well, I'd encourage alone cannot drive our soldiers to victory. The soldiers, nothing without his weapon or fresh new army divisions, would be a little more than meat shields if they aren't well armed. Now, as grenade town guns, rifles, machine guns, we must scare as much as possible to like his troops, break open the armies, and distribute the weapons. I wish before you actually do go to war, like you could do something like, like steer, not like convince, but steer how you want the war to go. I think that would be a smart thing to have. But who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet complaining usually about why he can't play and win video games, so. Well, yeah. We'll see what happens. I just want to circle you, man. That's all I want. You're not going to do that. You guys can't even beat these guys up. Of course, they do have radar. Forced it. Where is he going? Go here. There you go. Yeah, and even though we do have a lot of equipment, like I said, I mean, it's not really fair. I mean, come on. You can't make divisions like there's no tomorrow. You can't cheat like the AI, unfortunately. Give him arms. I wish you could cheat like the AI, but... But yeah, I guess at this point, you kind of have to. Fortify the North. Which makes no sense, since we can't do anything about it. The liberal Ra Meyer and Slavic hordes of Kovner and Vitushka have split our lower forces in two, keeping the land controlled by Stalakers' administration separate from each other. Transference of personnel, arms, and other supplies between these two areas is almost impossible. With the great burden of sacrifice is placed upon the weary shoulders of a leader, it's his immediate actions that determine the greatness of his character. Stalakers are man of strength, with the wisdom and fortitude to decree that difficult decisions must be made in these dire times. Therefore, to ensure absolute victory, Stalakers determine that the majority of our resources be used to fortify the north and protect it from collapse. Too late. If the North Falls, so it is only a ray of hope for Austin's future. Well, you should have thought about that before, giving us only five crappy divisions. <laughs> it literally makes no sense. Why? But whatever. Got rid of the Jews? Good. Jew baby, Jew baby. Bro, just help kill them off. Come on. Uh, we gotta kill these guys off. The Belarusians need to die. They have to die. These guys are going to come in, but whatever. These, the SS can kill each other off. The SS and the General Obelisk. Whatever it is. You guys are going here like that. Actually, go right there. Get them off. You guys go in. Um, why don't you guys go here, too? Why don't you guys go in here, too? I'm going to force you attack. And you're not going to lose. Because you don't have permission to lose. Cut him off, cut him off, cut him off. Come on. Why are you taking so long? Jesus Christ, you suck so badly. That's your choice. Win or lose. Of course, they, they would have, of course, they would have anti-air. They would be have special forces there. Come on, man. Not a lot to lose, so. Uh, defend Riga. We have fortified the north, and now we must fortify the capital, the capital of Austin, and the central base of our strategic operations is the city of Riga. We're still in his most trusted advice, concoct masterful plans, and issue necessary orders. Riga is, without question, the most important target for the scum we fight against. Nothing will wrench victory further away from a grasp than the loss of the city of one of our many enemies. For now, the defense of Riga is our, our most priority. Remember this? Was go ahead? Yeah, it sucks. Um, I'd love to fight fiscal crisis. Rapidly worse than whatever. I mean, this has happened. This all this have happened before we actually played as this nation. So this kind of sucks. This is really dumb. Minus thirty three percent. Whatever. I don't care. I, I really don't care. All I do want to do is just win here. Of course, it's going to hurt us with our uh, military. Yeah. So it's even more difficult for us now. Anyway, so we're just stupid. But defend Riga. We fortify the north and must defend and fortify its capital. The capital of Austin and the central base of our strategic operations is the city of Riga. We're still and his most trusted advisor conduct cock as a plan to issue orders. Well, did I not register this? Oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, which is stupid because if it's so masterful, then why is it not? Why was it not the capital? Why did the other one, someone else get the capital? How can we not win against goddamn militia? It's because of the stupid budget stuff. Partially, partially. It's not all because of the budget. It's only lowers this by ten percent, isn't it? Yeah. So stupid. Uh, Tushka's escaping. Going to do that. Please go ahead. Don't really care. I'll be honest. Do not really care. And this is the point in the game where you're like, wow, this is really, this is really stupid. And uh, yeah, this is not very fair. 
but Fenrigo, a strong army. Our conscription has been boosted, bringing in an influx of freshly trained soldiers into the armed forces. Our new divisions have been fully trained or armed with the ne weapons necessary to triumph in the many skirmishes and battles to come. Stalock and his administration now boast an impressive army and his mighty so in all of Austin, which shall crush our enemies like roaches under boot. We should not falter on our march to victory. Fight for the Reich. Heinrich Loza, appointed by the late Balfour himself, who gained a reputation for managing the most stable and prosperous Reich's commissariat of Eastern Europe. It would be foolish to deny that Loza intended for Stalaker to be his legitimate successor, which is a true testament to the latter's loyalty. Stalaker represents the continued con continuity of Loza's regime and therefore of national daddyism itself. To fight for him is not just to fight for Austin, but to defend the Reich, to protect the beautiful families, and to preserve the Aryan dream worldwide. Old Prussian traditions, despite the Aryan blood running through their veins, our enemies are not truly German. Their treasonous sentiments cannot be permitted to win in battle or mine. To fight against them, in his time we bring back some traditional means of warfare. There are still officers in the army who remember the Prussian values of old. If like the likes of mine and the Yakon claim they represent the future, it's their duty to embrace the past. Stand for order. But the ranks of Gestapo to the rifle Reichs Commissar of Austria and Franz Walter Stalakers assemble the order that the German Reich expects out of its lowest citizens. As dedicated national socialist, a hard working bureaucrat, and a vocal adherent of the conservative wing of the NSDAP, stood firmly by his beliefs in the face of the civil war. Such devotion to the fatherland and the Aryan race should serve as an inspiration for our troops. Every single man fighting for Stalaker must be reminded of their leader, and why they should look up to him as a symbol of order in these dark times. Haste makes waste. As all men of strategy know, attrition is a slow road to defeat. By ordering the conservation of the army's vital supplies, Stalaker's generals have displayed the cunning ingenuity on the battlefield, the insane fanaticism of our enemies may lead them to utilize the resources more swiftly and aggressively, but as our logical military tactics will see seal Stalaker's triumph. Such rationing would admittedly slow our forces down, but rather we act with sense and destroy ourselves with incompetence. Bell Creek tactics. In comparison to the unruly forces who have risen up against us, Stalaker's army boasts only the most competent and gifted generals. On their advice, Stalaker has wisely ordered a greater rationing of supplies to prevent these armed forces from running out of their vital resources, the speed of which our divisions will negatively uh, affect, be affected by these restrict preservations, but a slow army is better than a destitute one. Our enemies are beset with attrition while we maintain our vital supplies, so victory should be secured. Save your supplies. Stalaker's soldiers will be issued the order to serve as, save as many supplies as possible for their own. From now on, enemy resources will allow to come into our position and be utilized to their full extent. Rationing our supplies is useful, but may not be enough in a war as chaotic as this. Our men must find weapons wherever they can, can to make use of them for the cause. There will be nothing as satisfying as destroying the enemy with their own means of warfare, saving souls. It's with, it was within the nature of the Slavic hordes to attempt to rise up against the rifle masters and claim dominance over Austin. The actions in the Civil War have not surprised us. What has struck us to our core, however, is the burning pain of the fellow Germans turning their back on the National Socialists to promote their own absurd fanatis, fantasies. Those German bureaucrats and soldiers who were seduced by the manipulation of Drescher, Meyer, and even Yakon have tainted the Aryan blood with their foolish actions, but any foe who desires to join her side shall be forgiven and accepted. Those not only boost her conscription and bolster the cause, but also send out a message of redemption that may see her rival's armies collapse as a men flock stalker. And hold once more, when do we get there? The dawn rises on a united Austin, and the soldiers return to their families, boots kicked in mud and blood. Stalaker's glorious victory is a triumph for the German Reich and a message of solidarity for their national socialist comrades throughout the continent. Lay Fuhrer's vision will never be despoiled. Stalaker's greeted the roars and with relief, but now we must focus on stitching this Rex Commissary back together and wiping out the last vestiges of his descent. With that dedication, Austin will be rebuilt into a strong, unified bastion of Germanization of Europe, along with Stalaker. And this is where we're at. Now, truth be told, I did do some consequences for this because. It's, like I said earlier, it's impossible. You can't really play fairly for this cell. But it's TNL. You're more here for the story than actual combat. Usually. Usually. Let's see what's up. Keep going in. Thank you. And I'm out. Excuse me. Hey, come on. Let's go. Go in. You go up here. Oh, and there goes those guys. So now we're, it's one against these guys now. Now we have to fight General Lebrecht Lexlin. So, Yakon Zen, you're going to this great head. Dead weight. Go in. Force it. Force it. Force it. Force them all to die. Because, my God, this is. I can't wait for a rework for Austin. Austin has so much awesome potential. Like, I. It's just. I don't know. It's one of the few nations that I'm extraordinarily excited for because there's so many directions it could go, how many different ways it could be done. Obviously, with like a six way civil war here, it, it's god awful fighting this, but it, it gets there's so much potential for Austin. Especially the devs really want to make a good story out of this stuff. Oh my goodness, there's such such potential for Austin. Ah, they also have a fiscal crisis. No, that's us. No, that's us. Yeah, my bad. You guys are the final push and silence the liberals, which actually helped us out, but sort of ish. Yeah, when I play as them. A little easier than playing this, so Riga's are so there you go. I did have these consequences, like I said, but you know you can't, you literally can't win unless uh, it, it, it goes Shalaker, nice. Unless you cheat, it's a, it's a little impossible. So 
We get out of the Fiscal Crisis, which is nice. Suppression Values is extremely strong, but I see how, why the devs put it in here for, uh, you know, um, supposedly bounce, but there's no there's no bounce. <laughs> there's really not any bounce. You can have as much, like 100% more, more, more attack, and with only five divisions, it might do something, but with four divisions down here and one division up here, there's no way you can hold out. I, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not the best of for, but whatever. I'm, I'm just expecting, like, Austin to get some really, wow, um, just a great update someday. But that's going to take years from now. But I just wanted to see what Stalik was like, and uh, he's interesting. Franz Volta, thank you very much. But if you enjoyed the video somehow, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll probably try out another Warlord for Rex Commissariat. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.